All right, so I'm gonna show how to open up and disassemble this ASUS model UX303U. So we're gonna have to remove some T5 or Torx 5 screws and then some PH1 or JS1 screws hidden underneath these rubber pieces. So to remove these rubber pieces, you're gonna wanna use something like a flathead screwdriver or something thin and flat that you can get under here. So I just get it in between this gap at the top and then we're gonna pry it up like this. All right, so here you can see the adhesive comes off. It might come off like not very clean, but try and just stick it back together or you might have to use some new double stick adhesive. All right, we're gonna go on this side. I pried that one out earlier so it was easier, but this side I haven't done yet. So let's see how this one comes out. All right, so we're gonna get underneath and we're just gonna pry it up. There we go, this one came out cleaner. All right, so again, we're gonna have to remove these two PH1 or JS1 screws underneath here. Okay, we'll remove those. And then we're going to remove all the T5 or Torx 5 screws. All right, you wanna keep the screws in order. I do that by putting them with the flat side down on my desk in the pattern I remove them. And yeah, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of these. Maybe I'll put these slightly. Well, actually, no, I can't put them in view because then they get in my way. So anyways, take all these screws out. Wow, this one's much longer. So I basically put the screws like this on the flat side and then I just put them in the pattern that I remove them. So you have this rectangular pattern. That's how I take them out and put them. All right, so I'm gonna remove all of the screws. Okay. You're welcome to fast forward through if you don't care to watch, but you can also just unscrew yours while you're watching, so. There's a little, there's two little holes here at the bottom. I believe these are for microphones. So if you cover these two little holes, you'll probably get bad microphone sound. Okay. All right, so now we got all these screws out. We should hopefully be able to pop this cover off. Forgot to bring my uh, suction cup here. So let's see if I can pop it out without the suction cup. If not, I'm gonna have to go get one. All right, so now you can see there's actually a gap here that I can lift up. So I actually don't need my suction cup. I don't know if the battery's expanding or something because that came out pretty easily. Anyways, we're gonna hold this up. Let's see if it pops out all of the clips. Okay, it looks like it's coming out pretty easily. Kind of just grabbing here and then holding down here while I kind of pull it up. And there we go. There's something attached here, so you wanna be careful. Let me see what's going on. Okay, that's kind of weird. It's attached with um, an adhesive, so that's not even an actual cable that's holding, but the adhesive is attached to the cable. So I'm gonna pull on the adhesive here just to get it off. Okay. That's kind of strange. Why'd they attach it like that? Um, okay, well, I guess we'll just peel it all off. There we go. Okay, so I don't know why they attach that adhesive like that onto here. But we got that out. If you just yank on it, you'll end up ripping out the wireless antenna. So you do want to be careful. It's attached to both wireless antennas. And it looks like there's two pieces of tape so we can actually separate this. Sorry, my head got in the way. So I'm going to peel that off and I'm going to put this back on top. All right, let's go ahead and reattach this. So line up the little screw hole here. And then we're going to just put this tape back down. There go. I don't know why that's there, but whatever. It was there, so we'll put it back. Okay. So we got this connector here. So this has two screws. You can pull that up and you can separate the CMOS BIOS battery board with the wireless card and the two USB ports here as well as the SD card slot here. Okay, I'm not going to do that. Um, this one has an issue turning on. I'm hoping it's a RAM issue. So we're going to be removing the RAM and cleaning it up just to see if that will help. But it looks like there's only one stick of RAM here. So anyways, I'm going to peel up this piece of foil. So it's actually taped over the side. So I'm going to try and peel that out the side off first. There we go. And let's see this side. Okay. I don't know why they put all this tape on it, but let's peel this up. 
Okay. Man, it's stuck on there pretty good. Okay. Peel up the adhesive there. Oh, it tore a little bit. All right, so we'll do that. Let's peel this adhesive back. You want to hold the stick of ram down because you don't want to rip that out with the adhesive right once you get past that then you should be able to pop these two to the side and take this out there is ram solder to the board there so i'm actually going to test it with the internal ram and see if it turns on if you want to know how to remove the battery the battery connector is right here let me zoom in so it's right here i just get my fingernails underneath the wings of this one and then you just pop it up just like oops just like this ow there we go okay so just like that we got that disconnected i'm going to try a complete power reset um so i'm going to disconnect the cmos or the bios battery as well so it's right there i just grab the wings and i kind of just wiggle the connector just like this and it pops out all right you got the hard drive here so the hard drive it looks like we'd have to remove um the battery to get to it so let's zoom out and let's actually remove the battery okay so the battery all the internal stuff i think is held in with ph1 or js1 screws um battery has three along the top and then two along the bottom so let's remove the three screws up here again keep them in order because they can be different size shape and lengths right. actually we might not oh, actually yeah we do have to remove the battery Okay, and usually after disconnecting the battery, I press and hold the power button for 10 to 15 seconds to drain the power just to be safe. So I'll do that after I actually pull the whole battery out. All right, so we got that out. We're gonna lift the battery up. Um, it looks like the speakers are attached to it, so you wanna be careful. Um, I'm gonna disconnect the speaker connector here, just like the CMOS battery. Kinda grab the wings and you kinda just wiggle it as you pull, just like that. All right, so here we go. The speakers are somehow attached to the battery and I don't wanna disconnect all this cable cause then I'll have to put it back. So I'm just gonna flip the battery over. Um, there's a battery model number here. Um, oh shoot, I need to turn this whole thing over, huh? Okay, so the battery model number here, C31N1339. Um, I think the speakers are just double stick adhesive on top, onto the speaker onto the battery sorry so if you wanted to somehow peel them off it looks like you can you got okay so you got this one cable here for the microphone and apparently only one of the microphones is real because there's only a microphone actually here this side has nothing there you got the um, trackpad or touchpad cable here these cables come out just by flipping these little latches and you can pop them out again I'm gonna leave it in um, got this connector here. I'm not sure what that's for. It might be a keyboard backlight connector. The keyboard connector is right here. Um, you got the LCD LVDS connector. If you do remove this, you want to make sure disconnect both or disconnect this battery and then open the laptop, press and hold the power button 10 to 15 seconds before you try and pull this out. Um, but these kinds of cables, when you pull them out, you pull up on this tab and then I just get underneath and pop it up like that. All right, you got the fan connector, CPU or processor is soldered to the motherboard, so you can't take that out. And that's pretty much all I see under here. So I'm gonna flip this back over and we're gonna put the battery screws back in. All right, just to keep it safe. All right, and if you're wondering, this middle screw here is longer than the rest. So if you accidentally mixed them up, hopefully that'll help. Okay. Oh wait, I forgot, I have to take out the hard drive. Okay, so let's flip the battery back out of the way. Okay, so there's one part here for the hard drive, so I think if the battery is left on, then you can't remove that. There's four or three screws holding it down after you remove the battery, so two up here and then one down here. Okay, remove the last one. All right, once you got all those screws out, you just grab this and then you kind of wiggle it and pull it back. I'm gonna hold this down, all right? And there we go. So we got the hard drive here. Um, 
looks like an SSD, but it feels heavy like a spinning drive. SK Hynix, so it should be an SSD. This must be a really old model. Anyways, there's four screws holding it onto this um, metal caddy. So if you wanted to change the SSD out, that's all you have to do. Um, and then you can put a new 2.5 inch SATA hard drive or SSD in there. So I'm going to put that back in, slide this back over. All right, let's tighten these up. <clears throat> and that's how you know you have a good fit screwdriver when the screw actually gets stuck in the screw as you're trying to take it out. All right. Okay, we're going to put the battery back in now. Let's zoom back out. Oh, actually, I don't need to zoom out, huh? Okay, we'll just flip the battery back over. Get that lined up. Put these screws back in. <clears throat> Make sure you're not smashing the speaker cable. If we're lucky, <clears throat> the computer will turn on. Let's put all these screws back in. Get the cable back out of the way. Put the last really long screw in. All right, we're gonna so we're gonna reconnect the CMOS or the BIOS or whatever you want to call it, the RTC real time clock battery, back in here. All right, just line it back up and pinch the two pieces together. Then the battery connector, just line it up and push that down into place. Speaker connector here, line that up, pinch the two together. There we go. All right, I'm going to test it real quick. I don't know if it will turn on without plugging in the cable since we disconnected all the batteries, but we'll find out. All right, so let's do that. Again, if you're messing with the LCD or LVDS connector, oh, the battery's dead. So I'm going to have to bring this inside, plug it in, and see. Actually, it's starting up. So let's see if anything happens or if it's still completely dead. It might be the motherboard RAM is actually toast. So we'll see what happens. The keyboard just lit up and shut off. Um, this hard drive light is just solid. Usually if it's solid, that means it's not doing anything. It should be blinking, I think, if that's an actual hard drive light. So it does seem like it's a motherboard issue because turning it on, nothing is happening. The light is just staying solid here. So, yeah. Power light is solid too. So these two lights are on, but nothing is happening. So let's see, caps lock light. Caps lock light is responding. So let me actually check if it's the screen cable. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna press and hold the power button. If they're lucky, it might be the screen cable. So I'm gonna disconnect the battery now. This is the only battery you need to disconnect when doing this, okay? So pop that connector off. Open it up, we'll press and hold the power button, 10 to 15 seconds, all right. <clears throat> okay, and then after we do that, we're gonna go ahead, disconnect the LCD screen connector and then reconnect it. And we'll see if there's any change. All right, so that's good. Let's go ahead and disconnect this screen cable. Let me zoom in so you can see it. All right, so to remove that, I grab this and again I just get underneath one corner and pop it up just like that. There we go. I'm going to line it back up, push it back down into place, make sure it's nice and snug. Reconnect the battery connector here. All right. Now we're going to open it back up, press the power button and see if we got any change. So this light came back on. Okay, and I think it's not doing anything. So same thing, <clears throat> the light is just solid, but um, yeah. Anyways, hopefully this video helps some people because a lot of times it is actually the RAM, um, but it looks like the RAM issue on this one is probably more on the motherboard itself. So that didn't work. All right, so <clears throat> I'm just turning it back off. And I'm gonna put the other the stick of RAM back in and put it back together. So let me zoom out. Okay, it's still on, so I need to make sure it turns off completely. Okay. 
Okay. Huh, it's turning itself on. So I guess there is some real motherboard issue with this thing. It's turning itself on and off. Let's see if I hold the power button for longer. Yeah, it looks like there's some other weird power issue because the thing keeps turning itself on. So that's not normal behavior. Um, anyways, I guess we'll just put the stick of RAM back. It's not going to do anything. So I'm going to pop the connector here to turn it off. Put the stick of RAM back in. Add an angle like that. Just click it down. Make sure these wings of the foil are out. And then you can wrap it back over. I mean, they did break, but... All right, so let's clip the battery back in, even though it's just going to keep turning itself back on and off. And we'll put this cover back on. Flip it over. If you want, you can line up the little screw hole mount thing again. It looks like it's already lined up. Oops, or not. Okay, I need to make sure I can actually see through this when it goes down. So I need to put the screw there so it stays lined up. Okay, there we go, lined up. And then I'm gonna use that to guide it over. And there we go. We'll take this one screw first and we'll loosely fit it. Okay, now let's clip everything back in. Even though I don't think there's any clips, it doesn't feel like it. Right, we'll take the other screw from this corner and we'll tighten that one in place as well. <clears throat> tighten it down completely. All right, let's put these rubber pieces. There's a little square cut out for where it should line up. Push that into place. All right, get that, push that into place. There we go. <clears throat> Switch back to the T5 or Torx 5 bit and put back the rest of the screws. <clears throat> yeah, my throat's dry. Alright, get back all these screws. The center one is super long. The rest are short. Alright. And that's pretty much it. You're welcome to stay while I put back the rest of the screws. But um, anyways, hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, please like and subscribe share my channel with others so that they can benefit and learn how to fix their own devices. I also do other random videos like how to install um, different types of things like toilet seats and stuff like that. So yeah, um, overall my channel should be able to help most people with things around the house. Um, so yeah, like, comment, share, and you know the drill. Oops, this piece doesn't want to go in right so I need to make sure it clips in properly. There we go. Alright, make sure I clip that in. Okay. I'll hold it down while I screw this in. Alright, and there we go. So, yeah, hopefully this video helped you guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!